reviews for the first time in ages earlier. Um, so I was just gonna thank those of you that, that were kind enough to reach out and, and send us a review. Thank you very much. We really appreciate hearing from you, like genuinely, even if it's just a quick quick message or whatever. It, it just, it makes us uh, feel inspired to keep doing it for you. Um, so thanks ever so much for the love. If you do feel so inclined, please go ahead and leave us a review on iTunes. It, it really helps us. Uh, or the, the Apple podcast. Um, I don't think you can leave reviews on Stitcher or any of the others, but if you can, obviously do that as well. And uh, yeah, it would be great to hear from you. And it really does help support us. Obviously, we don't get paid for doing this or anything. We're, we're just doing it as a bit of a hobby and to hopefully entertain you all. Um, so there we go. Pete, structure this episode, right? What What is it we're covering? Do you want to tell them? Um, <clears throat> well, we've agreed on a bit of structure. Um, but like always, we're, we're pretty unorganized. So it's taking a different... Uh, different path from what we were discussing earlier but something i've recently done is i've bought myself a camera i know that you're quite into your photography mm. not necessarily sort of just carp fishing photography but i know you get out in the countryside and with your girlfriend and you're both quite keen photographers um so i've recently bought a second hand dslr camera which i'm trying my best to get to grips with and i thought i could come up with a few questions for you because mm. you're quite knowledgeable on the subject and uh yeah, we'll try and go from there. I know a lot of people are sort of more and more getting into photography where fishing's concerned. Um, it's a big part of it now, especially of Instagram. Um, and I thought we could, like, I could uh, rack your brains. Yeah, sure, we can We can do that. We can go over that stuff. Actually, before we jump into that, we forgot something. Ooh. Our old uh, feature of every single podcast that we've done is our tipple. Our tipple of the episode, our drink. Now... On the last podcast, for those of you that have listened to it, um, Pete Pete was saying that he was getting into his rum and he was uh, he was all about his spiced rum, so he kind of inspired me. Um, so I went out and bought some Bacardi Spiced, which pretty much is as camp as it as the name would suggest. Um, it's it tastes kind of like the the normal white Bacardi, but a little bit more meaty, if that makes sense. A little bit more spicy. A little bit stronger. Um, I don't like it, to be honest with you. I'm not enjoying it at all. I'm being uber camp. Uh, no offense to all you you camp listeners out there, um, but I'm mixing it with some diet coke, mm-hmm. and I've also got some. Uh, I would never usually drink like this, by the way, with these these mixers. But I thought, why not? Let's go for it. And some uh, Pepsi Max Cherry. Ooh. Totally mix it up. Don't know what I'm thinking, really. I think the lockdown's getting to me. But anyway, yeah, so that's my drink of the episode. It is uh, some rather camp Bacardi spiced dark rum. How about you, Pete? What are you what are you rolling with today? Nothing exciting. So it's exactly the same as last week. So I'm still on my bottle of JW Spices dark rum, which I'm convinced is a supermarket own brand rum. Um, like I say, I've been in sort of quarantine in my house for two weeks. I've relied on people to do my shopping so i can't complain because it's actually my parents very kindly picked it up for me um but the fact it's still here from last week is tells you quite a lot that it's not that nice <laughs> what's your favorite rum then what what is a good rum like next time i go to the shop what what should i be buying so i think <clears throat> i tend to like spice rums more so um things like captain morgan spiced i really enjoy it it's a very generic one, I think. It's quite sort of, um, I guess in like in your in your world of whiskies, it's probably like a popular whiskey, like a grouse or something. I guess sort of like it's on every, uh, it's in every pub, in the optics. Um, I also like, I really like an Appleton Estate, which is like a Jamaican dark rum. Uh, that's a really nice one. Uh, I always mix mm. it with Coke, mate. Um, mm. I don't like it that strong either. Like if I'm having a gin, I'm into my gins. I'll do sort of like a strong gin. I'll go 50-50 with the mm. tonic. I enjoy that. But like with rum, I like just, yeah. I'm having a dash of rum and a load of Coke. I enjoy it. Nice. But yeah. 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 F- fun little fact. It was uh, it was Pete's birthday a couple of days ago. I mm-hmm. uh, didn't realize until that day when he messaged me to tell me. Um, I actually tried to order you some 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 rum some jamaican rum it's called bamboo 
it, it the bottle looks kick ass so i thought i'd order it for you but then i got so i put the order through then i got a message saying due to to corona they're not shipping and blah 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 so i'm sorry mate you you were gonna have a bottle of rum on the way to you but uh, i'll have to put it on the back burner and ne- come back to you ne- at another point mate. yeah next year <laughs> give it give it a month or so i'll send it again <laughs> uh yeah bum bamboo rum have you heard of that no it's it's quite posh yeah mm. probably why i've yeah. not heard of it might have, to, might have to try it as well um cool awesome anyway gang let's get going <laughs> um shoot pete what 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 look i'm not a pro um but what you like what do you want to know so you got no idea this could either be sort of uh information gold or just a complete mm. and utter let down <laughs> for podcast yeah, content. i've got no idea i've got no idea what he's going to ask by the way <laughs> this is our attempt at going structured <laughs> probably going to fail uh i've got no idea what he wants to know um we just spoke about this like five minutes before we we started recording um but we'll see what happens anyway over to you pete um you bought a canon 700d didn't you um no it's a 600d um so so what i've done is i've <clears throat> sort of gone out to the market i've done a bit of research on camera so i've bought a canon 600d which is i think the camera model's like about 10 years old it might even be 12 years old it's it's certainly not a high-tech sort of state-of-the-art camera so it hasn't got any like wi-fi features or a touch screen and things like that but the things i sort of looked out for were it's got a flip out rotating screen um which i thought cart fishing especially doing self takes that would be uh that would yep. be helpful um <clears throat> so my first thing was i thought if some of the listeners are listening uh and they sort of wanted to buy a camera and get into sort of photography i was gonna ask you what sort of camera you would recommend for people um, if they're just getting into mm. photography, I mean, should they be looking down a DSLR route? Should they be looking at something else? Um, and I was also thinking if you could sort of like, if some people are just happy with um, the photos they're getting on their phones, maybe sort of say the advantages of having a, like buying themselves a DSLR. Yeah. Oh, multiple questions in there. Um, I would say it, look, it depends. If you just want, some nice sharp images of you and your fish um i would say look you like the way phones are these days let's just presume you've got a modern phone you can get pretty damn good images on there um along with that like i know the new iphones um don't know what model i've got but they're, they're all pretty much the same they have uh in in phone editing um that is pretty damn good. I mean, I've got um, Lightroom and Photoshop, which are professional uh, level photo editing software. To be honest, like you, you, you can do a hell of a lot just in the normal iPhone app now um, in terms of editing. So if you just want a nice image of you and your your capture, your fish, and, and a, you know the odd rod shot and things like that, then um, look, you're probably fine with a phone. You can edit it with your phone as well. Um, and you're probably good to go if you want to get a little bit more creative or you just want you know higher resolution pictures maybe you want to blow them up or something like that or you want to do some kind of um, funny far out editing then you're probably going to want a proper DSLR and shoot in RAW which is a different format uh, you've got JPEG is the normal format which your phone will shoot in and then you've got RAW um, which your DSLR which is uh, basically one of the big professional looking cameras uh, which you can get fairly cheap these days uh that that will shoot in jpeg or it will shoot in raw if you want it to um now what raw means is it basically it, it that image retains more information so it's more malleable if you like you can do more with it you can edit it more without any uh degeneration of the image without affecting the quality basically so it depends what you want i mean let's just say you want to get a little bit better with your photography um, than a typical phone um, or let's say you you're doing night shots for example um, you can again you can use your phone you can get some lighting some backing lighting that you can turn on because the phone's flash will it, you know just forget it it's not man enough to light up a scene um, so you could still use your phone but but you might want to you know step in towards the DSLR and in the same respect if you want to get some real nice arty images yeah, DSLR is the right thing 
I think, Pete, like, if people are interested in the topic of photography, let's just presume, you know, half of them have got a DSLR, half of them are just going to do some <laughs> some uh, gorilla stuff on their phone. And either one is fine. That's that's my take. I don't know if I've answered your question or if I've uh, if I've avoided it somehow. Yeah, I just think sort of like so. With I think well, this is my take on a very very amateur level. I've had a camera for a few weeks. I've been playing around in the garden mainly because I've been on lockdown. Um, but I think certainly with like low light level situations, um, especially mm. if you're sort of photo- uh, taking photos of sort of still objects and not moving objects, you've got a lot more scope. Uh, with a DSLR, um, so this is something I was going to ask going to quiz you about was the the dial on the top of the camera. Um, so I know a lot of people might have like a DSLR and they just have it in auto mode, um, oh. which is taking. I guess it's a very similar photo to what you would get out of your smartphone, isn't it? More or less. Um, yeah. So I was thinking. I don't know if you could sort of like explain. I I know sort of different manufacturers have got different things, but they all sort of essentially mean the same sort of thing. Um, which sort of mode would you sort of recommend people to to shoot in, and how do they go about yeah. learning stuff? Yeah, I, I use a Canon. Um, the reason I just I like them. The color coding on a Canon is just very unique. You can't beat it. Um, which basically means the colors in the finished image. Um, so anyway, I've got to start at the beginning, right? You basically got three controls that you want to be mindful of when you're shooting a, a, a picture, right? It's when you're taking a picture. Um, you've got your aperture, which is basically the, um, the, the diameter that the, that the lens is open. In layman's terms, how wide open is that lens, right? That's your aperture. Now, the wider it is, the lower the depth of field, so if it's very wide, like I've got some very wide lenses, like 1.2, you've got a very small depth of field. So if if I held my finger in front of the camera, like my uh, and my my finger would be in focus, but the rest of my hand would be out of focus. It's that shallower depth of field. Whereas if I pumped that aperture down to um, say 11, then my whole hand would be in in focus. I mean, my whole hand would be in focus at probably around four um now the wider it is the more light you have hitting that lens so you in in lower light conditions it's better because it lets more light in um and in the same respect you can have a faster shutter speed and a lower iso if it's got if you've got a wider aperture i'll come on to those in a minute um just quick note you don't want to have your aperture open too wide so let's say you 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 know you spunk a, a grand or two on like a real nice lens and it's got like a 1.2 aperture you don't want to be using that for uh for pictures of you and holding up a carp or any other fish because either you or the carp are going to be in focus and the other one is going to be out of focus and to be honest some people might <clears throat> want that look i just think it looks tacky i think you want both yourself and the carp in focus so you probably don't want to be shooting with anything um any aperture number that's less than let's say 3.2 at the very lowest um that that that's probably going to be you know your 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 max on that um if you go too high and and it's like on aperture 11 or something like that then you're going to have everything in focus which isn't necessarily a bad thing but there's going to be a lot less light coming in which means you'll have to slow down the shutter speed to let more light in, which can cause blurring because you'll naturally move a little bit. I'll come on to that in a minute. Um, or you'll have to increase the ISO. Now, ISO, hopefully I'm not losing people here. <laughs> ISO is like fake light. So if if you want a quick shutter speed or if you're low on light, whatever, you, you can increase your ISO to make sure that the image comes out um, properly exposed and it's not too dark. The problem with that is once you get over a certain ISO number, it will make the the image a bit grainy and noisy, what we call noisy, which just means kind of fuzzy. Um, so you really you want to be keeping your ISO as low as possible. Um, and again, I just mentioned shutter speed. Really, you want your shutter speed at, at, at least twice the the focal the sorry the length of the uh, the lens. 
So let's say you're shooting with a 50 mil lens, you would want at least a hundredth of a second shutter speed um, just to ensure that if you move a bit, you know, it's not, the image isn't going to look slightly blurred or soft. Um, just to main, remain sharp, you want a nice quick shutter speed. Um, See, that's a nice tip like for me. So <clears throat> there you go. I've learned something there. So um, I've been shooting a lot in aperture priority mode that you've sort of mentioned just because I've been looking to play around with a depth of field. So that's literally having something in focus in front of you and then like a nice blurry background, essentially. So especially yeah. if like a, a capture shot, not that I've caught a fish since I've had the camera. Um, but then you can get yourself in focus and then you sort of, you and your, your fish sort of pop out of the image and everything else in the background uh, a little bit blurry. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've been playing around with the aperture priority mode. Um, I've not been doing so much in manual um because i've just been playing around with that that sort of depth of field uh but actually what you said there uh is really good information sort of like with the shutter speed and stuff so when you're in aperture priority mode it's like um for me as a beginner it's the easiest way to get that depth of field because you are in control of the aperture so you can adjust essentially how much background blur you have by the lower sort of value of the aperture um, but it controls the shutter speed and things for you. And I've really noticed actually that sometimes in different light conditions, um, the shutter speed's been really slow. And I've been like trying to get photos of the kids in the garden um, over the last week or so. And quite often, because they, they cannot stand still for love nor money, um, they're blurry and out of focus. So what you were just saying there about the, um, the shutter speed with the, the lens, what was it again? Let, let's say you're using a 50 mil lens, you want it at least a hundred, um, a hundredth of a second shutter speed. Otherwise, you're going to get some a, a soft image and potential blurring. The only caveat to that is that if you're using um, a crop frame camera, which generally the cheaper DSLRs mm -hmm. are crop crop sensor, which basically means the sensor in it, which senses the light and the image, is smaller than a standard what would be called a full frame. Um, then you have to understand that's that's altered slightly. So. You've got a Canon peak. Canon's crop sensors are a 1.6, um, that of a standard full mm -hmm. frame. So, excuse me. Basically, you'd want to times your um, the length of your lens um, by 1.6. So, does that? Let's say, let, just for easy math, let's say a hundred mil lens is going to become a hundred and sixty mil lens. So, guess what? Uh, a two hundred. You know, let, let let's say you're shooting with a a, a two. Uh, sorry, a one hundred mil lens, right? Now you'd think, okay, I need to double the the shutter speed to make it two hundred for the second. No, you don't, because you're on a crop sensor. You need to times it by one point six. So you actually need a three hundred twentieth of a second shutter speed. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, the the whole double rule that applies for full frame right. cameras, not crop sensors. No, cool. Is that, yeah, have I explained that well? Or not? Yeah, and I I understand. Um, whether I think some people who are sort of listening to this and into sort of photography will understand. Some people will get a little bit lost on it, but that's actually again for me is really good because yeah, I've got a crop sense camera and I've been out and I've bought a yeah. uh, second hand fifty mil lens, um, and so something I found with the fifty mil lens with my camera and i don't know if this is well hold, hold up hold up a minute i just want to quickly say just on that point if anyone's like scratching their head like so what do i need to do look if you don't if you don't know that you've probably got a crop sensor um full frames are a lot more expensive and and generally people just that you would get into it via a crop sensor that's almost like the norm these days so look do the equation whatever your your, your focal length of the the lens um times it uh j j basically double it and then some times your lens by 1.6 so if you've got a 50 mil lens um you times that by 1.6 quick math quick maths i'm using a calculator that's 80 right so you'd need 120th shutter speed right you just double it uh sorry 160th mm -hmm. makes yeah. sense if i confused you no that's that's good for me no. Go on. so with the 50 mil lens and a uh, crop sense camera i find to get mm. say i'm taking a, a capture shot in order to get me in like the frame i find i have to move the, the cameras quite a distance away would, yeah. would i be closer if i had a full frame camera and a 50 mil lens 
yeah, you, your your lens is a 50 mil lens, but it's on a crop sensor camera. It's on a smaller censored camera. So in fact, it's an 80 mil lens. Um, right. So yeah, you you, you, sh- you know you you would have wanted like a 24 mil, um, like the 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 there's a Canon 20 um, Canon 24 mil 2.8 aperture, just their standard. It's not L series or anything like that. Uh, you should have got that one. Uh, it's like it's a couple of hundred quid. That that would have been better for you because that would have given you closer to fifty mm-hmm. mil. At fifty mil, that's what they say. That that's like the lifelike thing. You, it doesn't look too big. You're not too far away. That that's the as close to the real eye as you can get. Um, so yeah, that that's what I would have advised you to get. Now, to be honest, yeah. Now someone like for me. Now I've gone out and I bought my camera, the camera body with a kit lens. Uh, and I got it second hand for 120 something pound. So I'm, I'm on a budget, right? So a 200 pound lens, I'm not, I'm not buying. Um, so I've bought a second hand 50 mil lens. Um, but I've got to say the image quality from sort of like a, I guess it's a portrait shot, isn't it? Um, which a capture shot is the image quality from the 50 mil, like young now lens, whatever I've bought for 18 quid second hand on eBay compared to the <laughs> uh, kit lens I got with the, the camera is like phenomenal difference. Uh, the depth of field, everything is, is way better. So uh, to, to, yeah, I mean, okay, but it's an 18 quid lens. Awesome. But it it's probably not going to be as good quality glass as the kit lens. Kit lenses aren't very good quality. But still, I just don't... I mean, how much was the, the lens new? They're only like 50 yes. quid new, you yeah, said. Yeah, I think 60 quid, something like that, new. That that just can't... Even though if it's an import or whatever, it just can't be good quality glass. Um, so, yeah. But, I mean, look, the, the thing is, it doesn't matter, does it? You, you're looking at it thinking, bloody hell, they look, they look shit hot. That's all that matters, right? Yeah, I mean, the, the, I'm happy with the pictures I'm getting. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, I've been compared to the kit lens anyway for for the photos I'm taking. Um, yeah, I think it's a, a really good upgrade. So I wouldn't sort of um, if there's people out there who are sort of on a budget like me, I wouldn't be put off by the sort of a very expensive lenses. Uh, and lenses they are expensive, they really are. I was amazed, really. Mm. Um, but then it's all about the lens, isn't it? It's about what you put in front of the camera more so than the body than the camera. In a lot of in a lot of cases, it. You are 100% right, yeah. So my girlfriend's got a Canon... Uh, I'm looking at it now, actually. It's 700D, mm-hmm. uh, which, which I yours is a 600D. I guess it's the one up from that. Um, she got it secondhand. She's using my lens on it. Um, and the images uh, that she's getting are honestly phenomenal, like very good quality. Um, my my camera is a lot more expensive and i don't think you'd see a difference in image quality and it's basically down to the fact that cameras have been so good for quite a while um like they can only get so good in terms of image quality then what you're paying for is extra features and um you know a bit better iso capabilities etc um but you can get stunning images on a budget i mean i think she paid like 300 quid second hand for her camera something like that um a couple of years ago and, and and well pete you paid how much did you pay for your camera 125 not much 125 which isn't quid. They're about 150 uh, is the going rate for them second yeah. hand so it's but it's not a you know a... there we go but i bet that could take some phenomenal Im- images it, it most of it is about light is knowing how to use the camera once you know how to do that which doesn't take long to be honest with you it's all about lighting and and how you view the image and the angle that you're at you can just do a few as silly as it sounds a few degrees difference can make all all the difference uh, to an image it can make a, what would look like an average image look really really good i'm not great with that that kind of stuff i'll be honest uh, i'm just not um but some people are but um yeah, you don't need to spend much money at all. Uh, you really don't. I reckon, you know, you could probably, like, put your camera and your lens next to mine. Most people probably, and we took, like, an identical picture from the same position and everything. I bet most people couldn't tell a difference, like, genuinely. Um, yes. 
so yeah i guess don't think you need to spend loads i guess that's, that's it i think if 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 we were showing sort of um some very sort of keen photographers who maybe do it for a living um the images side by side they'd probably go yeah pff, like this one is sort of way ahead but i think to like the to the average course, person but um yeah they'd sort of struggle to to, to pick out the differences um Think, think of it this way, right? L- look at the old... I I mean... Sorry, I just said old. I shouldn't have said that. Think of some iconic carp images, right? What what? Let's take it from the beginning. What makes a good picture? Something that you look at and then you it like stirs something in you. You're like, wow. It, it like captivates you or it takes you somewhere. It gives you some kind of feeling or maybe some nostalgia or whatever it is. It... It, it moves you like I look at some of the sipography pictures, which are obviously modern pictures, and I'm like, "Wow!" Like I can, I can feel it. Like it makes me want to get to the mm. bank just by looking at a picture. Think think of the, those images that do that for you. Sure, there's going to be some from the likes of these modern um, carp anglers and photographers, like uh, the, the sipography guy um, Elliot Gray. But most of those that you're going to think of, you're going to be thinking of like. Sp- you know pete springay or you know someone like an old image that just for whatever reason that picture just like captivates you those images aren't taken on high quality cameras you know you're going to do better on your iphone but it's the angle it's the it, it, there's so much more to it than the actual you know megapixels on the picture that that's what i'm trying to say it's it's if you want to get into photography and you want to get some good images look it, it's about like the creativity and the art behind it. I don't want to sound like an arty douchebag, but that's that's what it comes down to, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Um, so that's probably a good way to lead on into my next sort of uh, the question there. So with the actual photo itself. Now you're on your bank on your own. Uh, have you got any sort of major do's and don'ts for a capture shot? For a capture yeah. shot, ooh. Hmm. I think for, first thing you've got to consider is like, where are you going to be taking this picture? Um, you might want the water in the background, the lake in the background, but generally you wouldn't. It, the shot's just going to look busy. It just it's just generally not the one. Um, instead, you, you know, get a plain background, get the bushes behind you. You know, try not to get an otter fence. They don't look great, do they? They're obviously very important, but they don't look mm-hmm. great. So just try and get like a, a just a plain um, bush behind you. Uh, green is great in, you know, when the bushes are green, obviously not this time of year because we're in winter at the time of recording. But if it's winter, then get get it all brown. Get get Try and get one color, as close to one color as you can behind you. Um, make sure, I would say make sure that you're a good distance from the bush that's behind you because if you're close to it it's absolutely fine but just bear in mind no matter what your aperture is doing generally you you, all of it is going to be in focus so you and the carp aren't really going to pop instead if you can come forward from the bush and have a good amount of distance between yourself and the bush behind you um you and the carp are going to kind of pop out because the camera, unless you have a very um, low aperture or, or high number aperture, should I say, um, unless you've got that, then the background's naturally going to be out of focus a bit and you and the carp are going to be in focus, which is going to make you pop out of the image and, you know, just just kind of uh, sub- subconsciously that image will look better. It'll look cleaner, it'll look crisper and it'll just, it'll just look better, basically. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh-huh. As well as that, what I would say is like lighting is key. You don't want the light, like the sun hitting the back of you, like straight into the camera. It's just not the one. You want to be well lit. And lighting is like, that's the first thing I look at when I'm, when I'm trying to compose an image. Like, like say I'm out um, stalking deer and I want to get an image of one. Like I won't press that shutter down if I know the lighting is shit. I just wouldn't do it. It just feels wrong to me. There's no, I don't know why, because you, know, <laughs> you should shoot as many images as you want, but it just doesn't feel right to me. What I'm trying to say is lighting is everything. I would try and maneuver myself so I can be in a good position to, to, to shoot that deer um, with my camera, by the way. Um, so think of your lighting. You want the lighting to be hitting you, hitting you head on. 
Um, so the photographer that's taking the image, or if you're doing a self-take, you want the light behind them, the image, the, the light hitting you straight on. That That would be the... Maybe that would be the first thing that I'd consider, actually. And then I'd, like, sort my background out accordingly. Um, now, sometimes, you know, if, if the sun is low, it's quite nice to get a bit of, the like, the lighting to the side. Because it looks a bit dramatic and it's like the light dapples across the fish and, and, your, uh, and your face. So you can get funny with that. But generally, rule of thumb, you want the light hitting you, uh, the sunlight hitting you head on. And you want a, a, a good plain background behind you, and you want to be a good distance away from that background. Yeah, I think I like it. Um, <clears throat> something where, if I look at um, previous captures, um, it's just yeah, the background is sort of all important, and try not to have any clutter, I guess, in the background because it can absolutely ruin a photo. Um, I've got one. Hundred percent. Yeah. Get get rid of you know. Try not to get the unhooking mat in there or the way sling you know or or yeah head torch or like i don't know fucking dildos mugs whatever <laughs> it might be try and try and get them out of the shot yeah you want it you want it clean you want the eye to pretty much just have you and the carp to focus on yeah 100 percent. um like i say looking back at old sort of capture shots i just i wish it was something in the past i'd uh paid more attention to um yeah, I've got, yeah, I'm exactly the same. I was looking through some the other day. and uh, We used to catch some stunning little fish, uh -huh. didn't we? Uh, not always little, but we used to catch some stunning fish, really nice, pretty fish. And the uh, some of the pictures are just god-awful, like really bad camera quality, like just the angles and what we were doing and just, just yeah. It, it, I think once you get into photography a little bit, everything's magnified like you really notice those kind of bad shots like uh for a while i was looking through all my photos for a while i had my camera really low to the ground and it was like shooting up at me which just looked bizarre i imagine it was like my phone was on my or my sorry not my phone my little compact camera was on my my bait bucket or something it just doesn't look right it just looks really bad um I suppose that's another thing to consider, actually, is the height. You want the height of the camera to be um, at the same height as as the carp slash you. You know, as, uh, as, as the, the carp's back, I guess you'd say. That would be nice and central. Um, you don't want it too low. You don't want it too high. Uh, you want it nice and centred. So it's a lot to consider, isn't it? Especially if you're doing it uh, on the bank on your own. Um, so that's where, like, a retainer yeah. sling comes in, like, pretty handy. Uh, so you can, you can capture the fish and sort of deal with it and then i guess you can put it in the retainer while you're sorting your photography gear out and if, you, if you're looking at it from that perspective you're not just getting a quick snap like bam i caught a fish here we go wonderful if you want to get the if you're into your photography and you want to get that sort of image um it takes a bit of preparation time um yeah i mean i i, I would say once you've done it once or twice it really doesn't you know it it, it really doesn't i think probably Let's say someone's listening to this and they've not quite got into this yet, but they want to. Yeah, it probably sounds really daunting and they're like, geez, I've got to do this, that, and there's so much to remember. It's not. And, and once you've taken a few photos, it's all pretty obvious, really. Um, so it, it's not. It, you'll learn on the job. It's no way near as complicated as fishing is. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Um, so, yeah, don't, don't sweat it. Once you've done it a few times, it'll be second nature. And, you know... It should only take a minute or two. Net your fish, jam the bloody landing net pole into the into the uh, the lake bottom, and just go and set it up real quick. You'll be fine. Yeah, I don't think you need to mess around with retainers and that and whatnot. To be honest, it shouldn't take very long at all. No. Cool. Um, so the next one, Sam, self takes. Now. Oh, you are you are punishing. Yeah, people, I am. Yeah, Jeez. this is good. I'm enjoying this. Yeah. Um, so self takes a lot of the time, like especially with me with my fishing, um, I'm out on my own. Uh, so you've got to be prepared, obviously, to to set it all up on your own. What sort of camera settings would you use, and how do you go about taking a decent self take, say with a DSLR camera on the bank? I'll tell you what my issues are with mine. Okay, I've not had the issue yet, but these are just problems I've sort of 
thinking about things whilst I've been using my camera. I'm sort of like coming up with these scenarios in my head. One, got to get the camera in focus without you or the fish in the image. So that, yeah. that potentially is an issue. Yeah, I can take some practice shots of just me in the photo. Um, presumably, so I can get myself... I I assume I'd just go into manual focus mode, focus it until I get myself in, you know, like a decent, decent mm. sort of focus level. The next one, um, do you do it on a timer? Do you have it on a 10-second timer? Do you use like a camera remote? Uh, what are your... So if I'm doing it on my phone which I've been taking photos on my phone for fishing for years, I've got voice activation on my mobile phone. So if anyone's out there listening to this, turn on your voice activation settings. Uh, I shout shoot at my camera, and I sound like a maniac on the bank. <laughs> <laughs> I get some odd stares across the lake, but I don't mind if I've caught a fish. Right. And, but I set it all up on my phone, and I'll shout shoot at the camera, and then it does like a two-second timer, bam, takes a picture, shoot. I can adjust the fish, adjust myself. Do you know what I mean? I'm getting those, those takes there and then mm. um but with a dslr um just any tips to make that sort of easy for yourself yeah um it, it's it's a it's a good question right it, it, it's gonna depend <clears throat> let's say you've got a a flip screen on your dslr mm -hmm. right which a, a lot of these um a lot of the crop i think most of the crop sensors uh, which are the cheaper ones which they're not just cheap, by the way. You can get very expensive crop sensors. Uh, I've got one, in fact. And the reason I have a crop sensor is because the image is more magnified and, and I do uh, wildlife photography for it, and, and you need it. Um, but generally, most people listen to this, they're going to have a crop sensor. Uh, what was the question? Jeez, that, that, that's falling out of my brain. <laughs> it's um, just taking self-takes, easiest way to do it. So, like... Oh yeah, sorry that that I've got it, I've got it. So yeah, m m sorry, buddy. Most most crop sensors have got the flip screen, mm -hmm. right? So flip out the screen, shoot off the back, which means don't use the eyepiece, obviously, because you're not going to be behind the camera. This is a self take. So what you can do is when you're setting it up, you can set your timer on the camera, right? Ha ha have you, you know, you want the Look, we need to mention this. You want the fish out of water for minimal amount of time. Of course you do. Put it on the mat. Make sure it's wet. Pour a load of water over it. You know, your camera should be set up by now. Don't set your camera up with the fish on the bank. Set it up whilst it's in the net, recovering from the from the fight, right? Let's say it's all your camera's all set up. You flip your screen out. You're turning it on. It's all on. You, you, you should, I mean, certainly on all the, wow, well, certainly on my Canon, the Canons I've had, and my girlfriend's Canon, when you flip that screen around, it'll automatically be shooting off the back, shooting on the screen, so to speak. Just click on your face. And as you walk backwards, that that it will stay locked onto your face. So don't use manual focus. Forget that. Do automatic focus. Click on your face on the screen. And as you walk backwards, you'll stay in so focus. That's one now, issue with is... my camera. It doesn't have that like autofocus like, tracking. Right. Okay. Hmm. Interesting one. Stumped you now, um, <laughs> Well, the I I I don't have that. See, so mine is I'm a different scenario. Um, and I, and I'll be honest with you. Um, and and some diehard photographers will be like pulling their hair out of this. What I what I would do on my own, um, for a self take for me, bearing in mind I've I've got like quite quite a nice camera, is I would just put it in moot like put it to movie mode so it's recording a video um obviously auto auto focus myself in um and i would just record a video of myself holding the fish in different positions and i would then take a still image exactly where i wanted it so rather than taking pictures that's how i would do it now it's those still images that you take of the image they're not going to be as good quality as an actual image um but the the way my camera shoots it's going to be good enough good enough for me let's say that you know look if it the thing is if if the fish was like my target fish um let's say it's the upper 40 common that um that it, that's swimming around in my new water look i'm not going to be doing that i'm going to be phoning someone to come down to the lake to take a proper picture of it right 
But let's just say this is, you know, you've caught yourself a, a nice, pretty mid-20 and you just want to pick. You know, you're probably get better off making some compromises. Um, and for me, I shoot it in a movie. Um, but anyway, I digress. Um, I guess what I would do in that scenario, if I couldn't automatically focus on myself, um, if it doesn't automatically focus, Pete, how does it autom... I mean, it. you've got autofocus on your camera, mm-hmm. haven't you? So how does it not automatically focus on you? I'm not sure I'd have on to, that. Or it just doesn't track yeah, your face. Yeah, I have to to autofocus. You've got to keep the button like half pressed in. Mm. That's why I say I'm, I'm taking photos of myself. So this is what I would do. I've not done it yet. Um, I'll be taking photos of myself, basically. No fish in front of the unhooking mat, getting myself in focus. Um, and then when I've got myself in focus, it, I'll then get the fish, mm. self-timer, press the button, run around, pick the fish up. That sounds like a, a settings issue. Are you sure that's not something up with your settings? No, it's just um, it's not a feature my camera's got. <clears throat> so if you're like recording in video, like a lot of cameras or like face tracks, so they'll auto-focus whilst you're... Let, let, let me go and grab my girlfriend's camera, which is it's only like... I think it's two models away from yours, so it shouldn't be too different. Go on. Uh, keep talking because they can't hear me. Though. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, basically, my camera has a has an issue where I don't think it's got the function to, to track a face. Uh, you have to have the button sort of half suppressed to, to use the autofocus mode. Um, so, my intention would be to get myself in focus, uh, get a frame sorted, get myself in focus without the fish. Um, and then set the camera to an auto timer, get the fish and everything on the mat, and then I can sort of press the camera button, go around, pick the fish up, and um, yeah, go from there. Um, how you doing, mate? You found the camera yet? Yeah, see, so what I've done is, so yeah, I've turned it on. This is a Canon 700D. I flip the screen around, um, I turn it on, and then I have to press the back button to make sure it's shooting off the back, which means I can basically means i can see myself on mm-hmm. the back um and it just automatically tracks my face straight yeah. away straight out the gate and like i can't actually lose it yeah. I'm, like moving the, the camera around like mad it just locks on so me. It, it's um, definitely not a feature my camera's got um and i know because when i was locked i've done a lot of, a bit of research on the camera before i bought it and one other thing in a lot of reviews it wasn't good for guys who do a lot of vlogging and stuff because it doesn't keep that autofocus like tracked on your face mm. Um, mm. it's just one of those things mate um, so it's just a little problem I have to overcome I mean obviously if I've got someone there who can take a photo like you were saying if it's like a, a mega capture I'm going to be straight on the phone to a mate who's going to come down and get the shots for me not mm. so much a problem uh, but on my own it's just something I'll figure out but I'll figure it out mate I'm quite resourceful and uh, I'll come back to you all with a uh, what i'm doing yeah i don't think as well my camera's got it might well do i don't know enough i've only shot like one or two videos with it i don't think i can really adjust sort of like the aperture settings and stuff in film mode i think it's just purely auto oh i don't i don't think that'll be true if you if you turn that that thumb wheel on the top to m which is Mm -hmm. manual um which i've got a bit more to say on that actually which i'll come to in a minute yeah, you definitely should be able to change your aperture. I'd be surprised if you couldn't. Hang on. I'm doing it now. I've got my camera in my hand. Um, mm. So in manual. But then when I press video, I have to, I can't record in manual. I've got to turn the wheel to video mode. There should... No, there should be... No, there should be... You know your switch that goes... It's off, on. Mm-hmm. And, and then there should be an image of a camera there that's separate to your wheel. No? No. No, we'll, we'll discuss this uh, off-pod. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you, you've you've got a, an old camera. I'm, I'm not familiar with it then. Uh, no, sorry. that's cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so anyway, going back to it, you would, for photos for yourself, um, you're quite happy to stick it in movie mode. And uh, then take stills from that frame, which I think I agree with you. I think be, mm. be yourself. That's that's mm-hmm. that's cool. Like you're happy with it. Images for you. Um, 
yeah, it's all good. And as long as you're happy, then then happy days. Um, you said you were gonna, you wanted to talk a little bit more about the manual mode. Yeah, yeah. And and by the way, look, this this is look. If if I've got like a, a nice, pretty mid twenty or something like that, and I'm not too bothered about, I'm talking about those scenarios, right? If I've got my target fish, you know, um, I could probably get damn good images just by sticking it in movie mode but i probably wouldn't you know I'd, I'd probably phone my girlfriend or someone that knows their way around the camera um pretty much just my girlfriend that i know <laughs> around me anyway up here I, i'd be calling them and getting them to take the image you know look look it's it's a fish you've worked hard for you want to get a good image um but yeah just for general fish yeah movie mode for me is good enough bearing in mind that the um the the that my camera shoots really good videos, whereas, you know, perhaps in the nice way possible, perhaps yours wouldn't. I'm not trying to poo-poo your camera, but, you know, if I had your camera, maybe I would just persevere and, and, and get a, you know, just use the self-timer um, and do it that way. But for me, yeah, I'm getting pretty damn good stills from my images, uh, from my videos. Um, yeah, in, in terms of shooting on manual, um, as I said before, you've got three main things to think to think about and consider when you're composing an image, when you're taking a picture, basically. Uh, you've got your aperture, you've got your shutter speed, and then you've got your ISO. I'll mercifully, briefly explain those things again. Shutter speed is how quick that shutter's going down. The quicker it goes, the less blur there's going to be. So you want to make it quick, but you don't need to make it super quick. Um, your aperture is how big the eye, the, the, the eye of the lens is open. Um, the lower it is, the shallower depth of field, the more out of focus the background and the more light is going to come in. And obviously the, the, the narrow is the opposite to that. And then the ISO is the fake light, um, which the more fake light you put on that, the higher your ISO number basically the more noisy and grainy it's going to be. Um, now, what I would do is shoot in manual, but put your ISO on automatic. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a... J just just go to M, right, which is the manual setting, where it is on Canon anyway. Find out what it is on, on Nikon. Um, and then go to your ISO and put that on auto. Now, what that'll do is basically it will take care of the ISO for you. You just worry about, okay, I want this aperture, let's say around 3.8, um, and I want the shutter speed at, I don't know, whatever it is, yeah, 200, whatever. Um, and then the ISO will take care of itself. What you can do is you can actually, or certainly in the Canons, you can have a max ISO. So oftentimes when I'm, uh, I'm, I'm shooting deer, um, which I don't do that often, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I'm not like some huge wildlife geek, but my girlfriend's really into it. No, there we go. Um, we, you know, we might be in like a forest that, that it's like dark in there. There's not much light. So I need a high SO, but I don't want it to be like too high because I don't want the image to be super grainy. So I might set my ISO, uh, say 1600 maximum. Um, bearing in mind my camera can, can cope with ISO quite well. Um, so it, it, it's on, I have ISO on auto, but it's 1600 maximum, right? And then I, I'll check in, I'll take a picture as a test. I'll check the image. Oh, it's a bit dark. Okay. Well, look, I could probably get away with a slightly show, a slower shutter speed. I'm probably good. And then you go from there. Now, the luxury that, that you have when taking a picture of a carp is you're pretty much still try taking a picture of a deer that's legging it through a freaking forest um because it's being hunted by something right that that's a different different thing altogether you need a very high shutter speed which messes with your iso and your aperture it, it just becomes a ball ache if you're just taking some self takes of a fish you don't have to worry about that so anyway long story short if you want a little bit of a bridge into shooting fully manual put it in fully manual um but put the iso in auto and maybe set a max ISO at, say, 800, for example. Um, and in pretty much every scenario, you're going to be covered, I think. Does that make sense? Does that, does that help? Yeah, I think so, mate. Yeah, definitely. I um, Yeah. Like you're saying, as a complete novice with all of this, like playing with the ISO, um, when the ISO is higher, you, you, get the, you lose the image sharpness, don't you? Um, so the image yeah. gets grainy, um, which is, yeah 
where the, like the manual mode i get i guess sort of comes in comes into its own um because you can adjust that over the aperture priority mode that i've been using uh, especially at lower light levels like when it's dusk and things it's um be nice to yeah. sort of a, a, adjust that one manually uh which exactly as you've just described uh in in the manual mode um yeah uh, and look you, you're taking a picture of a car right you you your shutter speed is is it's just i don't see any reason for for it it being too too high whatsoever you know do, your shutter speed doesn't really need to be over 320th of a second right i i just don't see a scenario where you'd need to have it quicker than that and that that's with like quite a long lens on it uh when you you're shooting like deer or birds of prey you 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 really you want like 2000th of a second up which makes the image real dark, you know. So that that's when the ISO becomes more apparent and important. So for us guys shooting a picture of a, a carp, yeah, you, you generally you shouldn't need your ISO up too high anyway. Um, if you do, then that's going to be because it's dark. Uh, and if it's dark, I strongly, strongly recommend getting some lighting behind you. Um, really, really important. Don't just rely on the flash on your camera or the flash on your phone because they're okay. shit. I'm right? going to jump honest. in here. So when you say Go on. Uh, lighting behind you, is that lighting behind you as the fish or behind you as the photographer? No, sorry, but behind the camera, it's hit, hitting the image. So if you're doing a self-take, right, and it's dark or it's dusk, there's not much light out there, you're going to want to be illuminated by an external light now you can have like a constant light you can you can just get like a the led light from amazon for like 20 quid or whatever that just bolt onto your your camera or, or your stand or something that'll work or you can get a flash gun um which will mount on onto the hot shoe on, on top of your camera um plug into your camera and it will be synchronized with the shutter going off um flash flash guns are really good I would recommend uh, the Canon one. The cheaper ones aren't great. It's something you want to spend a bit of money on. I don't know if that helps at all. Yeah, I've, I've seen people write about sort of like these big LED lights that you can you can use, like you're saying, like the 20 quid from Amazon's, and they fit in your hot shoe mount on top of the camera. Uh, but I've also heard a lot of people sort of saying, actually, you're better off that washes the image out quite significantly. Um, and people mm -hmm. saying use those lights to like illuminate your background behind you and the fish, um, and then just rely on like the camera flash uh, for night shots. I don't know if you've got any sort of sort of opinions on that or. Um, if I'm honest, I'm. Uh, it, it's not something that I'm super experienced with. Um, to be honest with you, um, I can't say I've I've caught anything at night time that's really no notable since i've started getting a bit better at photography I've, I've only been into photography i guess i don't know not 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 super long uh maybe two years something mm -hmm. like that um but you know i'm like pete i go balls in don't yeah. I, when I go in summer over the top <laughs> um <laughs> over the top yeah so i've been in it about two years but i'm by no means an expert um i don't think i've actually caught anything at night that's really noticeable that I, notable that I wanted to get a picture of that couldn't wait in a sling, to be honest with you, uh, or a sack, sorry. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so I don't know, mate. No, it's cool. That's cool. It's, we prefer, it's, it's I, better I, that I you're would, honest but, rather than just spout, spout bullshit oh yeah, and pretend you sort of know, know everything. I, I would, uh, uh, educated guess. I mean, I've taken night shots before and I've just used a solid backlight and it's been fine i mean you can tell it's you 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 can tell it's obviously uh obviously you can tell it's a night image and you can tell it's not as good quality but it's been okay i would just using the inbuilt flash i i would be worried about it whiting out a little bit um even used in conjunction with backlighting i like kind of like softer tones um <clears throat> so on I've i've got different I've got loads of different lights and in all of them, even my, my studio lights here in, in my home, um, which I use for, for my business actually for, for shooting videos, content videos. Um, I like, a, a, a like a, a filter on it. 
um, that gives like a warmer hue. It's just a personal thing. I don't like cold images. Um, certainly not when people are the subject. So, you know, obviously if you're taking a picture with yourself and a fish, you're in the picture. I don't like whited out images. Um, and I think a standard flash on a camera, even in conjunction with a, a backlight, would, would risk whiting out the image too much. Um, I don't know. I'd have to have a good old experiment, um, which I haven't done. Um, but again, if we're just talking about a picture of a, you know, a nice, you know, upper 20 that you want to get a picture of, it doesn't have to be a perfect image. You know, you could probably spend about 25 quid on, on Amazon and get a nice backlight, you know, crank it up, um, get your camera settings right. And you've probably got a pretty damn good image from that. Um, that's my take on it. Okay. Nice. Um, and I think sort of like the last thing I was going to go into was, I guess, uh, well, you and me, we've always been sort of um, quite, I guess, minimalist, keen on sort of traveling light, et cetera, et cetera. So for me, I've now got this big old bulky camera and now I've got to start looking at, you've got like lenses and a tripod and all the rest of it. What sort of, so I've now got a, like a rucksack full of extra gear. So that's now something else I've got to take. What are you sort of um, <laughs> carrying your gear in and how are you sort of minimizing it and making it, you know, it's like two different hobbies amalgamated now into one. Um, I don't know. How do you sort of like make it fit into your sort of style of carp fishing, I guess? Um, I mean, I wouldn't say my style of cart fishing is is minimalistic. Just to just to be clear, I, I mean I travel light. I, I don't take much stuff. Certainly compared to the average angler, I guess you could say I'm minimalistic. But I mean compare compare me to like Rootsy, I'm I'm not minimalistic. Um, but the honest answer is I don't take it. Um, I take my phone with me that I, that I always have on me because um, you know I've got. Uh, business that I run I've got family I just need my phone on me that will take images um, and I, I've got a little Joby um, a little Joby uh, tripod like miniature thing that just fits in my tackle bag and it's got a clamp for my phone um, and I can put that on top of you know whatever um, to take an image of a of a of a fish if I'm out again see see look there we go look I, I would probably use my phone unless it was like a fish that I really wanted a good image of. Um, so that that's all I take. I don't take any DSLR equipment with me. Um, don't rob me, but I leave it in my car. <laughs> um, I, I Yeah, I just, I, I, I take it, but I leave it in my car, um, which has got a really good alarm on it. Just yeah, so you know. um, I trust you. I trust our listeners, our beloved listeners. Uh, leave us a review. Hint, hint, you know, love you. Um, you know, I'll put the fish in a sack, um, or a, or a, uh, actually, I use a floating sling these days as well as sacks. Um, I've got one of those, very modern, uh, and I'll go and get my camera and I'll and I'll do it properly. But most fish, like, I don't take photos of, which is kind of sad, I guess. I mean, on a new water, like I've just joined this new water, big pit. You know, my first few fish, I'll be taking pictures of them. Because it's kind of special. And to be honest, it's a very special lake. I'll probably take pictures of all of those fish. But I guarantee most of them will be done on my iPhone. Um, which conveniently fits in your pocket. And you can get one of these small travel styled uh, bendy tripods. Um, and just clamp it in and, and away you go. Yeah. And that's my take yeah, on happy it. Day. I mean the new iPhone, the 11 or whatever it is. Uh girl at work's got one and the actual image quality on it is amazing it's literally like like yeah amazing um i uh i i don't have the brand brand new one uh much to my son's dismay he would love it if i got it <laughs> <laughs> he keeps going on got, got the 11 dad uh, I was like no i haven't uh but i've got one that came out i think it was last year or something and yeah the images are great uh but if you go back to like an iphone what did I have before this one? iPhone 8 or something like that? 7? Look at the images on them. They're fantastic. They're phenomenal. Again, get the lighting right. Yes, the, the, the camera is doing it all for you. So it's figuring out your shutter speed and all that. It's never going to be as good as a DSLR. 
but it's pretty damn good. And guess what? If you don't have a clue how to use a DSLR, you're probably going to take a better image on a phone than you would do on a DSLR if the DSLR was in manual. Um, so iPhones just take great images. Yeah, um, there's, there's a lot of AI built into there now, isn't there? Um, to get the perfect image, I guess. Uh, hmm. Where I've got yeah. a, my phone, I've got a Samsung Galaxy S8, so it's a few models, a few models old now. And yeah, the like low light images and stuff. It's just it's not up to the mark, really. Uh, but if you've got fantastic lighting, like you were saying earlier, the image quality is brilliant. Plus, you can do for fishing, uh, for self takes. You go onto like um, I think on the iPhone, it's called like portrait mode. On my phone, it's called selective focus, and then it will sort of blur out the background. But it's all done artificially yep. on top, if that makes sense. <clears throat> Um, it's not actually using sort of like the focal length, I guess, of the camera or a proper depth of field. Um, um, on, on, on my ca- on my iPhone, you can change the aperture. Okay. I don't have that luxury, I don't think. I probably do. Yeah. I would change it. If I went into the settings of that camera, I probably do. Uh, but if I use the selective focus setting, like quite often, something that you know that should be in focus has been sort of blurred out and it's like a glitch in the software rather than an actual like lens. Um. Mm. yeah i don't you don't i mean yeah i don't know Look, use whatever you got that's it um so i think basically what we can uh take from this little little segment is a two cart fishing photography two very different hobbies um i think for me i'm really enjoying the photography side of things you can take photos of many 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 different things as well when you're out on the bank which i've enjoyed doing but like you say if um unless you're sort of really sort of desperate and you want that sort of amazing capture capture shot for an amazing fish uh modern day phones are gonna do you proud is basically what we're saying 100 percent. and then obviously we haven't even spoke about editing which is huge but- Funny you say um, that. As you were talking about your editing programs, I've actually written editing mm. on my little list of things. Um, oh, you got a list? Well, it's it's the end of the list. <laughs> you badass! What else is on your list? Uh, oh, mate, we've gone for it all, really. Uh, oh, okay. I'm not going to read you the list. Boring for people to hear. <laughs> no, don't. Yeah, don't. Read um, it. Don't read it. But yeah, editing. Like, so sometimes with photography, do you almost feel like? If you, especially if you're really into your photography, like like you are, and that you were saying about the deer, and if the lighting level, I think you were saying, wasn't quite right, you're going to move to get the lighting better, rather than press the shutter. Do you get a sense of if you're not taking the perfect picture, is editing kind of cheating? Um. So here's the thing. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't edit to cover up mistake. I mean, look. This is probably not suitable for this podcast. You got to understand, I, I, I'm uh, I'm a peculiar guy, and and uh, yeah, look, if I'm going out and doing something like taking picture of some birds of prey or deer, I'm 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 doing it for fun, but I'm also not doing it for fun. You know, I'm I'm doing it because that is an escape from running, you know, two very fucking. <laughs> hard work businesses so it, it's it's a bit different for me it's a bit of an escape so i can get very caught up and involved in it um and i'm also a bit i guess i'm a bit pedantic in a way i i i got to a point i don't want to just press the shutter willy-nilly hope for the best and then oh i can edit the mistakes like i i i think i'm a bit more of a i guess like more of a purist without sounding like a douchebag I want to take a good image in the first place. Um, I'll use editing not to correct mistakes. I just wouldn't use that image. Um, plus, I'm not good enough at editing to correct mistakes. Um, it just it, you you can tell. Um, I use editing really for for color balancing, which people might not understand. So on your camera settings, you'll find um, a color balance setting. You, I don't know if you've had a look at this, Pete. You probably haven't. Um, generally, it will be on auto, auto balance. And then you can get it on like white balance. There's lots of different balancing, which basically it will prioritize what 
kind of colors and and uh, color spectrum it, it shoots in um generally i shoot on auto with that i will change it sometimes you can correct that a little bit but it, like again this stuff is like so it's so in depth that the average person looking at a picture just wouldn't even wouldn't really pick up on it wouldn't be relevant to them um yeah i don't know what what was the question mate i went off on a tangent oh uh, it was just basically is, is is do you consider it sort of in a way sort of cheating um like you yeah get, i do yeah. yes yeah i do i consider it cheating but like I, look I, i'm the same guy that that wouldn't use a bait boat because it's cheating mm -hmm. i'm just very if if someone tied a rig for me and i used that i mean no one would tie a rig for me i wouldn't use it but if i did i wouldn't fully count that as my car because i hadn't tied the rig <laughs> do you know what i mean for want of a better thing i'm very much like that so so yeah i i would deem it cheating now on the other hand um i've done some like really dramatic shots um like a, a an owl um a long-eared owl springs to mind and a, and a vulture i shot those images like purposely i i i did uh i did very moody first image and then i edited the fuck out of them like hours and hours and hours on each so they've almost become like black and white water paintings that are very dramatic I'll, sh I'll send you the pictures if you want, Pete. I think um, they're on your uh, Instagram, mate. On your Sam yeah, they're photography on... Instagram. I stalked the shit out of you and found your Instagram for your <laughs> photography. Mate, there's a photo of a deer on there. I was really impressed by it. I was like, oh, shit, like, fair play. <laughs> there's, a, there's a few deer. I mean, I haven't, I've posted maybe five pictures on there, 10 pictures mm -hmm. tops, old pictures as well. Yeah, yeah. So, so okay, then you've seen it. Um that's not on by the way that's not on the carp angler chronicles instagram or it's not even on my personal instagram it's on like a should be a hidden instagram don't know how you found it pete but yeah i mean like that one like obviously that image is heavily edited right but that image isn't to showcase oh i've taken a good image is it it's to conjure up a certain mood so in my mind editing is fine for that because the goal of that image is the editing whereas like it comes down to taking a picture of a carp i mean i think anything's game like if it looks shit edit it like the, the the goal is not to be a great photographer the goal is to get a picture of a fish that you really want a fucking good picture of so just edit do you know what i mean don't get hung up 100%. on it and if you're happy um, then you're happy yeah. like at the end of the day that's what it's for yeah just just do what you can with what you've got. I guess that is the basic fucking thing we're saying with this podcast, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, 100%. 100%. Um, yeah, I think, mate, that, that's pretty much... Uh, unless you've got anything you want to add into your sort of photography. There's, there's nothing I want to add other than, like, don't be like, oh, I can't afford a DSLR. I'm just going to take shit pictures, I guess. That's not true, man. Like, just with your freaking iPhone, like, you could go and create an awesome thing do you know what i mean um go go on our instagram and look at uh the movie i did i think i called it uh a small pit winter or something like that i just shot that on my iphone it's a movie uh with some dramatic music in the background and a bit of editing it i walk around the lake in about 20 minutes not even that shot a few things edited it in about half an hour didn't put hardly any effort into it it doesn't look great, to be honest. In fact, I'd never post it on, on like my photography page. It's pretty shit. But at the same time, it's not bad, right? What I'm trying to say is you can do a lot with just the thing that's in your pocket, which is your phone. Um, you really can. And uh, actually, on that point, Lady Gaga, who I know you're a big fan of, Pete. Huge. Um, I'm not. It, it's not my yeah. kind of music, but I respect your, I respect your viewpoints you that, on mate. that. Her... Yeah, sorry, man. Her latest music video was purely shot on the latest iPhone. Now, me being such a big fan, I didn't even know that. And I, I can't believe I'd have missed. Uh, no, Did I didn't, didn't know, know that, it. No. Honest, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. O honestly, just shot of an iPhone. It actually looks like a pretty kick-ass video. You know, it, it technology's come on. If The biggest thing is if you've got an iPhone. That's it. what I was going like, to sort of come on to. Yeah. Uh, look. Go. Who who's a good photographer in the car pangler world? Um, Mate from Nash. Who's he? The guy does their. I don't know. Photographer. 
Really? Yeah, he's like a like obviously Nash have got a big thing on like urban sort of fishing, haven't they? And his sort of like urban sort of carp images have become quite sort of famous, I guess. Um, oh, you have to look okay. him up. I can't remember his name. His photography is pretty awesome, though. Uh, Ollie, Ollie, I the guy they're... does Eurobanks with Adam Blair. I know. Yeah, I know their Eurobanks videos um, are pretty good. Um, but I didn't know about their photography. Um, yeah, I mean, what what I was thinking of is, um, oh, he actually teaches photography, and I'm trying to think of his bloody name. Um, he used to be a CC Moore guy, used to be a Corder guy. Who Gaz is Ferrum? that? Fish the car park. Like, yeah, yeah, Gaz Farum. I listened to one of his podcasts on. Oh, was it a podcast? It was, or it might have. I might have read it. But he actually fished uh, a lot in Cornwall, mate. Spent a lot of time uh, on Argo. I think he went to uni down in Penryn. Yeah, he wasn't he at Fal- uh, Falmouth. Yeah, he Falmouth. I know for a fact um, that he used to fish mm. Argo, um, which is a, a reservoir sort down of. south. Medium, medium sized pit. I can't think how big it is. What is it like? Seventy Something acres. Like that, yeah. Um, that did a forty pounder recently. To... I don't know if you saw that. Oh, I'm sure they'll love you saying. Oh, that. mate, I'm sure they won't mind. It was all in carp feed. It was sort of national carp press. Um, so I think the fish is sort of well known, mate. It was publicised in all the big mags and everything. So I'm sure they won't mind our little podcast mentioning yeah. it. Um. Um, nice. Forty pound. Is it a mirror? Common? I think it's. I think it's a mirror, mate. I've paid very little attention, to be honest. Um, I don't know why. I've just never had a an, an earning to to fish the place. Mm. I think it's sort of it's one of I those think... lakes where everyone sort of as soon as you be like, all oh, right, yeah, like, whereabouts you like you fish? And they're like Argle. Everyone's like Argle. It's like a it's like a big deal. Um, yeah, some there's probably some good fish in there. Uh, there's probably some good fishing to be had. Yeah. Does it not float? No, I boat? don't think it does, mate, to be honest. I've walked around it a few times. I've seen a fish on the bank, actually. I took photos for someone. Um, mm. Co- College is obviously very, you know, famous old pit, which is next door. Have you walked around that? <sighs> Briefly. On one of my uh, like Argle walks, uh, but with like the missus and the dog. And yeah. it wasn't really uh, like a kid in a backpack who's kicking off, so... Return to the car jobby. Um, but I think college is open again now. I think there's some sort of... I really? Oh, I might be well and truly out. I shouldn't be saying this really on the podcast. But I think it's um, there's like a, some sort of syndicate or something, or they try to get a syndicate going again. Whether they've restocked it or what, who knows. Um, but I believe there's a wow. some sort of syndicate on there. But again, mate, I could be chatting mm. utter bullshit, so... Ken Townley is your man for when it comes to college. Um, he kind of pioneered the place back in the day. Mm. Um, believe he publicised it a bit, you know. Um, but yeah, he's uh, he's the man when it comes to the history of college. Yeah, well, his um, um his writings on it are pretty they're a good read, to be honest, aren't they? If you can get your sort of hands on them, they're they're extensive. Oh, they are. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it, he had um, it, it wasn't publicised in magazines or anything. Um, but I think it's Memories of the Southwest, it's called, or something, uh, which was on the carp, uh, carpforum.com, something like that. Um, really good read. Really, really good read, actually, um, that there's a lot he's written on uh, regarding college and Argyle. Um, but yeah, anyway, I d- we digress. What I was going to say is, look, you know, look at... Um, Look at look at someone's image, you know, from Gaz Farum or um, damn Elliot it. Gray. Sipography, sipography. Elliot Gray, yeah. Oh, he was with Corder. Um, look at his images. Uh, he can take a photo, right? I guarantee. Give him uh, an iPhone, and then take me out next to him. You know, with my all singing, all dancing camera, with my, you know, very expensive lens. See who takes a better picture. Yeah. He he will kick my ass. He will take a way better picture with me than me 
sorry, he will take a way better picture than I would just with the phone in his pocket. Since isn't. buying this camera, I've really noticed myself now. Just you're thinking all the time now, even when I'm not taking photos, I could be doing something in the garden and the kids are doing something, say, and I'm like, actually, if I'm stood here, right, with this angle, with the light coming through the trees like that, and you can sort of like see this climbing yeah. frame and the swing set, I'm like, I can get a bloody good photo of the kids like that. And it's just about the eye, isn't it? And having the sort of eye, and once you're into it, mm-hmm. your brain starts automatically everyday scenarios or just scenarios when you're on the bank. You start thinking about just different things and you're just yeah. more clued into it and it becomes second nature. I think that's, yeah. Yeah. An- angles and light. Angles and light. Everyone's like light, light, light. If you look in the photography world, what's important? Light, 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 light. I think it's angles and light. So like the angle that you're you're in, the, the angle that your camera's coming from, and the light. Like that will just make an image. So yeah, you're right. That's the way to learn, by the way, Pete. Like just take photos of random shit. Like the more times you, you press that shutter, that tiny little bit better you're becoming. Um, and look, let's be honest, it's not that fucking hard to take a, a picture of you flat on just to showcase your car. <laughs> you know, it takes a little bit more effort if it's like a you're returning the carp to the water or you're in the water you're just lifting it out of the water for a pic something like that yeah it takes a bit more skill but generally for those shots you want someone behind the the camera anyway to get them mm-hmm. for you um you know and and yeah I don't so t- know. but that's it so i think moving forward especially uh in lockdown uh, some of the reviews some guys like the they've all come back and actually said well not all but a lot of people have sort of said to us that they like the fact we go sort of in depth. Uh, a few people have sort of, I think, suggested to you, Sam, that um, some of your secrets shouldn't be so secret. Um, <laughs> so I think this is sort of in the bait yeah. front. So I think we'll do a, a few different sort of um, podcasts, some on sort of like bait and putting baits together, like boilies and how to treat boilies and particles and different baits and then maybe something else on the application of baits in different scenarios uh, but we'll try i guess in the next few episodes to have a little bit of structure and try and put some good content together i think that's the plan isn't it mm. can so, you want to add sam no i'm all good stay safe stay happy and uh yeah stay up mm.